Hello and welcome to TVB News. Hong Kong's daily COVID caseload has reached another record high since late March with 10,683 new infections today. Among them, 193 are imported and there were eight more COVID-related deaths. Christy Khan reports. Over the past two weeks, the city's daily caseload showed a steadily increasing trend. Today, new COVID infections stayed above the 10,000 mark for the third day out of the past four. Health authorities said a majority of the new cases involved BA.4 or BA.5 strains, causing about 64 percent of the infections. According to statistics, the BA.5 strains has gradually become the major subvariant in Hong Kong. The strain itself can spread quickly in the community. They expect the number of cases to rise further as the real-time effective reproductive number measured by the University of Hong Kong is around 1.35. This number means a COVID patient can infect more than one person if there are no intervention measures in place. So we do expect the daily case load to further increase. So unless this number drops to 1.2, the epidemic situation is unlikely to uh, ease. And so far, there is no evidence to suggest that uh, we've entered the plateau. So we must not let our guard down. We must continue to observe anti-epidemic measures and get vaccinated. Health officials said 11 positive cases were reported across eight residential care homes. 45 people from the infected premises must undergo quarantine. Meanwhile, three more patients and one more staff member from Yan Chai Hospital's medical ward have come down with COVID. After an 84-year-old male patient was diagnosed with the coronavirus earlier. Christy Khan, TVB News. The hospital authority is adjusting the operating hours of one additional outpatient clinic because of the COVID-19 epidemic. Starting from tomorrow, the evening clinic session of Lady Trench General Outpatient Clinic in Chunwan will be suspended. The suspension will allow the HA to focus manpower and resources to enhance designated clinic and teleconsultation services for supporting COVID patients. Secretary for Health Lo Chung Mao insisted government officials share a common goal in fighting the pandemic, emphasizing they will not lie flat. He criticized a foreign news report which allegedly created a false impression that there are differences within the government regarding the anti-coronavirus measures. Christy Khan reports. In a blog post today, Secretary for Health Professor Lo Chong Mao criticized reports by a foreign news outlet which said the government is planning to scrap the hotel quarantine requirements in November. He did not name their news outlet. The report also said that there are different opinions within the administration, with Chief Executive John Lee supporting the lifting of hotel quarantine. And some officials, including the health minister himself, are against the idea. On Thursday, Bloomberg published a story quoting unnamed sources, saying Hong Kong officials were split on the decision about whether to cancel the hotel quarantine arrangement in November. Lowe said the misleading report has been widely quoted by local media and this may affect the government's fight against the pandemic. He said the government's team is united in its objective in terms of overall strategy to fight the pandemic. Lowe reiterated that the government will not lie flat, a euphemism for doing nothing, and will continue to contain the spread of COVID in the city, aiming to reduce the number of deaths and serious cases, as well as protect people in high-risk groups. Meanwhile, Executive Councillor Dr. Cohen Mantel reported that the city is not yet in a position to further relax hotel quarantine for inbound travelers, as the current wave of COVID has not peaked. We do not see uh, there is a definite uh, conclusion for the wave uh, to reach its peak uh, within this month. Of, co of course, everybody wish that they could, but uh, uh, there is yet a further need to analyze the data and to see the trend uh, in the next 
uh, one or two weeks before we can uh, see clearly whether the wave is going to peak within this week or this month or next. He said extending the vaccine pass requirement to children as young as five will protect them. He added that there are ways to improve the implementation of the mandate, such as allowing children to present paper vaccination records if they don't have smartphones. Christy Khan, TVB News. The country's top legislator, Li Zanshu, is set to visit four different countries, including Russia from September 7th to 17th. Li, chairman of the National People's Congress, or NPC, Standing Committee, will pay official visits to Russia, Mongolia, Nepal and South Korea. Li could meet South Korean President Yoon suk yeol He will attend the 7th Eastern Economic Forum during his stay in Russia. The forum will be held for four days in Vladivostok starting Monday, where Russian President Vladimir Putin is expected to deliver a speech on Wednesday. Former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, who launched drastic reforms that helped end the Cold War, was buried on Saturday after a farewell ceremony attended by thousands of mourners. The funeral was snubbed by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Nazvi Karim reports. For Alesha Nevmajitskaya, perestroika and glasnost were movements that she experienced and felt in 1990. The two rallying cries of the Mikhail Gorbachev era are emotional reminders for the 45-year-old. Of a time when the Soviet Union was opening up to the West, its politics, its culture, its music, and what she described as that feeling of freedom. She was among several thousand people who paid their last respects to the former Soviet Union leader, who was buried on Saturday at the Novodevichy Cemetery in Moscow. While the crowds were large, it was relatively low profile as far as the Kremlin was concerned, and it was not afforded state funeral status. Russian President Vladimir Putin did not attend, his spokesman saying he had a full schedule on Saturday. NATO countries are largely staying away from Russia because of its war with Ukraine, but some high-profile names did turn up for the ceremony. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban attended and placed a wreath on Gorbachev's coffin, while former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev also showed up at his memorial ceremony. The United States was represented by the country's ambassador to Russia, John Sullivan. This man, a 24-year-old teacher, said he doesn't know why Putin did not turn up, saying maybe the president was worried about his approval rating. At the funeral, Dmitry Muratov, editor-in-chief of the Novaya Gazeta newspaper and himself a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, headed a column of mourners carrying a portrait of his friend. A priest read a short prayer before a military band played the Russian national anthem, which has the same melody as the Soviet anthem, as Gorbachev's coffin was lowered into the ground. An honor guard then fired three shots into the air. Nazvi Karim, TVB News. Coming up after the break. Government working on plans to improve safety after accident in Mirror Concert. Liz Truss vows to act quickly over energy bills if she becomes British Prime Minister. Donald Trump remains defiant after FBI searches his home. Welcome back to TVB News. The dancer that was critically injured by a fallen video screen during a Mirror concert is very unlikely to fully recover, according to his father, who consulted with his doctors. Meanwhile, the government is coming up with new guidelines to ensure the safety of performers in the future. Caleb Lung has details. It has been more than a month since a dancer was hit by a video screen that fell onto the stage during a concert by the band Mirror at the Hong Kong Coliseum. Dancer Mo Lee, who sustained spinal injury that has left him in danger of becoming permanently paralyzed from the neck down, remains under intensive care. Lee's father, Reverend Derek Lee, wrote in his latest prayer request that assessment by doctors suggested there's a 95% chance that Mo Lee will never fully recover. Derek Lee urged the government's task force to find out the cause of the incident and take the necessary follow-up measures. Speaking to TVB News, Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism Kevin Young said there is an existing mechanism that demands event organizers to ensure the safety of stages. 
The mechanism has proved to be successful as no major issues have happened in the past. However, Yuan added performances have become more sophisticated over the past few years, while stage designs have also become more complicated. In view of the incidents, uh, we are now in the process of uh, discussing with the uh, organizers or groups of organizers to see how we could further enhance the safety of these stage, stage designs as well as the uh, step, uh, construction of these stages so that uh, um, uh, performers could uh, do their performance safely. Currently, the government is updating its mechanism and guidelines to ensure safety. We need to, well, on one hand, we have to ensure the safety uh, of all the performers, uh, but at the same time, we need to give some flexibility for the uh, performing groups as well as the organizers to arrange uh, high standards performance as well. So uh, we need to further discuss with the trade on the, on the level of details that we have to incorporate in the guidelines. Yong said as the police's investigation into the incident will take quite some time, the government will not wait for the investigation results before it comes up with improved measures to enhance safety. Caleb Leung, TVB News. Overseas, British Foreign Minister Liz Truss said she would set out immediate action to tackle rising energy bills if she is appointed prime minister this week. I will act immediately on bills and on energy supply, because I think those two things go hand in hand. We need to deal with the immediate problem. Mm -hmm. We need to help people. We need to help businesses. But we also need to sort out the supply issues and that have ended up and made us end up being where we are now. Trust repeated a pledge to be bold in tackling inflation, which is running in double digits. The result of the runoff election will be announced on Monday, with Trust the clear favorite to beat Rishi Sunak, a former chancellor. The voters are 160,000 conservative party members. In Ukraine, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant was knocked offline again on Saturday amid shelling. And Germany is now preparing a package of measures to counter rising energy prices after Russian energy giant Gazprom said it couldn't resume the supply of natural gas for now. Tracy Furness has more. The investment community has taken a dim view of Russia's decision to shut down the Nord Stream 1, a major gas pipeline to Germany. An oil and gas analyst from Investec said this is a further step in the economic war against Europe. Even through the Cold War, they supplied gas to Germany. Um, but as, as part of the invasion into Ukraine, um, they've continued to restrict gas supplies to Europe. And this is just the final twist in, in a, a bit of an end game, really, going into winter, where they've so, so severely restricted gas uh, even further. The move was the latest development in a saga in which Gazprom cites advanced technical problems as the reason for reducing gas flows through Nord Stream 1, an explanation rejected by German officials as a cover for a political power play following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. European utilities have scrambled to find additional energy supply during the summer months to get ready for the winter's heating demands, buying expensive liquefied gas that comes by ship while additional supplies have come by pipeline from Norway and Azerbaijan. Meanwhile, International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi said two of the agency's experts would remain permanently at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant in Ukraine. He was speaking in Vienna after a visit to the facility. We have been seeing um, military activity around the plant and, and I was able to see uh, myself and, and my team uh, impact holes, um, markings on, on buildings of um, uh, shelling. So it means that the physical integrity of the facility uh, has been violated not once, but several. 
And just 10 kilometres downstream from the nuclear plant, Nikopol and other towns and villages along the Dnieper River, residents have been spending the night in tents or cars, scared of the shelling that has intensified in the last few weeks. For about a month since the shelling started, we have been leaving the city every day because there have been shellings in the area where we live, says this resident of Nikopol. He said most of the city's population has left and those remaining sleep in shelters or basements. With some factories still working, many men are remaining in Nikopol while their families have fled. Tracy Furness, TVB News. Former U.S. President Donald Trump held a rally in Pennsylvania, his first appearance since an FBI raid on his Mar-a-Lago luxury estate in Florida. Matthew Bray reports. Former U.S. President Donald Trump returned to the campaign trail and first got stuck into the FBI over the raid at Mar-a-Lago. The FBI and the Justice Department have become vicious monsters controlled by radical left scoundrels, lawyers and the media who tell them what to do, you people right there, and when to do it. They're trying to silence me, and more importantly, they are trying to silence you. But we will not be silenced, right? Trump was making a case for himself running in 2024 and Republicans running for office in the state, and he wasted no time going after the current incumbent of the White House. The Biden administration invaded the home of their chief political opponent, who is absolutely destroying him and everyone else in the polls, I hate to say it. In the past week, Biden gave a speech in which he claimed, make America great again, Republicans pose a threat to democracy. But Trump turned the argument around, particularly on Russia, where Democrats are pushing the war narrative while Europe's economy is rolling over on sky-high gas and electricity prices. Just so you know, I was tougher in Russia than any president by four. I'm the one that stopped Nord Stream 2, the pipeline. I'm the one that did the big sanctions. And I guarantee you one thing, Putin was not going into Ukraine. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. Nobody was tougher than me, but I also got along with them. Pennsylvania suburbs, once reliably Republican, have shifted Democrat in the last five years, but the Rust Belt areas remain predominantly red. It remains a swing state with a median income below the national average. Matthew Bray, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Bye.